in I don't know a year uh, I don't actually have I don't actually have the year I haven't written that and now the lights have come on great this week in this is as bright as it's going to be for the next four months or something spend a penny spend spend that penny for your thoughts as well this week's suggestion was sent in by Angela Angela hello you sent it not by post or by postcard like like people used to do but you you wrote it on my Facebook page and you too can do that as well you you just go over to the Facebook page the puzzle writer Facebook page give it a like maybe do a suggestion or I don't know just look at it or get on with your life whatever you want to do thank you when you make a suggestion it means that i have to do less thinking so while this sounds essentially lazy if you knew me or anyone who knows me probably would think that that's quite a good thing that if i was doing less thinking angela writes dear puzzle writer she didn't write that she wrote she wrote uh spending a penny and a penny for your thoughts are little things we say but when did they start being de rigor i think that's how you say it and then she wrote tar and a little cross like a little kiss but i when i first read it i thought it said tax and then i thought that's an odd thing to say well you know maybe you're behind tax or something and then i realized that you know what it actually was there are so many things in that sentence in that request aren't there i mean even de rigor which is probably not how you say it i mean i think it's it's probably how you say it. It's, I mean, we might as well pull that apart at some point, but today we shall do the ones that were requested. For the non-British English speakers out there, spending a penny is a, well, quite a middle-class-ish way, You've quite a middle-class euphemism for going to the toilet. Which, if you're a United States English speaker, you might say you're going to the restroom, which I've never really understood, I'm sure. Maybe I'll look it up at some point, but, I mean... What kind of rest are you going? Have you got a good book on the go? If you're going for a particularly long number two, maybe? I would go as far as to say that spending a penny particularly or specifically refers, not specifically, specifically refers to a number one. You probably won't hear many people saying it anymore and for reasons that will become clear a little bit later on, my gran has been saying it all my life and she still, she still does a little titter afterwards. I'd sort of guessed that maybe it was to do with, I don't know, a toilet costing some money to get into. And correct, I was correct. Blind ignorance wins through this time, which seems to be the theme of the last couple of years, maybe probably the theme of the next few years. Ooh, political. Back in the 1850s, when the first public toilets were introduced in London, it cost a penny to get into them. According to phrases.org, Actually, it wasn't all of the toilets, it was only the toilets for the ladies. The men's urinals were free. I mean, goodness, we can't have ladies doing bodily functions for free. What is this? Imagine the scandal. Next, they'll want the vote or equal pay. Goodness me, I don't know about this progress in the world. I really don't. The phrase itself, however, didn't enter the culture, so to speak, until 1945 when, well, that was when it was recorded into a story by H. Lewis. People may have been saying it before then, but no one kind of wrote it down. The term to spend a penny didn't apparently enter the culture until 1945, though, when H. Lewis wrote a story called Strange Story. That, I mean, it might have been a strange story, but that's what it was called. It featured the line, Us girls, she said, are going to spend a penny. What japes? Phrases.org goes on to say that the phrase to spend a penny pretty much died in the 1970s when the charge went up to two pennies. Citing a Daily Telegraph article headlined, Two pennies to spend a penny. Last time I was in Waterloo, it was 20p to spend a penny. No doubt it's probably more now. I mean, can you imagine what it's like to live in a city like London and you actually need a wee? Or you've got bladder problems or, I don't know, something... You, urgently need to go and find a toilet for some reason as a driver i can tell you that basically it's i mean luckily i walk around in a three-piece suit so i'm able to mostly get away with it but my goodness me don't people tut at you I'm not doing anything that needs a tut i'm just asking to use the loo in a hotel usually and occasionally walking very very fast indeed looking 
in pain across Hyde Park heading towards the free toilets there. The best thing I can say about this is thank goodness for Ronald and his McDonald's. That'll be a McWee and fries. Cheers, lovely. I don't know why I said it in that voice. So that was all pretty straightforward, wasn't it? Spending a penny because you actually had to use to spend a penny to spend a penny. So what about penny for your thoughts? Well, this one's quite a bit more tricky and there's no clear set of reasoning or history on this one. Worldwide Words quotes Sir Thomas More, who in 1535 appears to have been the first person to have written down this phrase. Thomas More, by the way, was also the person who wrote what is probably the first ever science fiction novel, the uh, More's Utopia, or usually just referred to as Utopia, which is about a fictional country where everything's kind of good. It's also the first time that that phrase was used to describe a place. Utopia meaning no place or place that can never be. Sorry, I digress. I mean, it's actually quite an interesting thing and I recommend, you know, looking it up. It's not actually that hard to read, even though it's written in 16th century English. But anyway, that's something else. Further confusing things is I have no idea how much a penny was worth in 1535. And I've, I mean, I've tried to look it up and I've, and the, the estimates range from in today's money 50p to about £19,000. If you're an economic historian then maybe you can tell me. Either way I suspect that it's it was used in the same way that we use it today which is sort of a placatory way so if someone's looking a bit sort of distant or a bit maybe they're looking a bit down in the mouth maybe then you say oh penny for your thoughts because you're sort of you know it's like a it's like a hand on your shoulder it's, it's a nice thing to say. The cost is conciliatory, which is a word I have great difficulty saying. It's also metaphysical in a sense. Even though it's a small amount, it's somehow not insulting. I'm not saying that your thoughts are worth a penny. I'm just saying, you know, can I can I get in, please? Is it all right if I just, you know, here's, here's a little offering and then, and then maybe we can talk about it, yeah? There are, of course, loads of other phrases involving cents and pennies, putting your two cents in and and some others that I can't think of at the moment, but I'm sure there are. I'm not going to talk about those today because then there would be no room for other videos, which is, which is a stupid thing to say because I could make these videos every single day for the rest of my life and I would, all, I would always have something to, to, to talk about. I'm not going to do that, by the way, because I would be exhausted, more exhausted than I already am. I really, really need a holiday, but onwards and upwards, eh? So there you go, Angela. Spending a penny and, and penny for your thoughts is two nice phrases, one of which is really straightforward and one of which is, is, isn't, but they're two sort of gentle and nice phrases, aren't they, really? Thank you very much for suggesting them. As by way of some kind of payment for giving me the suggestion, how about you watch another video, Angela? I'll put it here. This was about a word. This one here is another story. And then if you press onto my face, if you haven't already done so, you can press onto my face and do a subscribe. I think that's it for today. Thanks very much then. Bye.